Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And it's Jeremy from Tested. Welcome back to Projections, where this week we are diving back into augmented reality. It's the future. Mixed reality, XR, as that's what Magic Leap wants us to call it. Uh, Magic Leap, of course, working with a bunch of developers, game developers, and some other app developers for experiences to experiment and dip their toes in augmented reality. One of whom is Made Fire. They released an app seven years ago in 2012 on the iPad. This is one of the, um, there's not too many of these, but it's one of at least two comic book viewing applications that you can download now on your phone, on your iPad, or even in virtual reality that they launched in the Gear VR last year. And now they're moving into the augmented reality space. So just this week, Madefire announced that their partnership with Magic Leap has come to fruition and they're releasing for Magic Leap an application that lets you experience their vision of comic books, of motion comics, in augmented reality. It's really a, a kind of a trippy experience, not like flipping open a comic book at all. Right. Uh, it's more like the pages or the panels are floating in your space. Right. Now they'll take traditional comic book assets or if it's made for the app, that's even better than they have all the proper layers and they'll break the layers apart and it's, it's very two-dimensional. It's sort of like a Viewmaster kind of experience, mm. right? Where you have one layer behind another, but they can do interesting things with transitions where they'll move objects in and out add uh, sound effects and they can now with, as you said, in uh, on the Magic Leap, they can do positional audio. So they can put audio around you and uh, correspond to actual objects in the scene. The app is available if you have a Magic Leap to try out, which I know most of you probably don't. We went over to Madefire's offices in the Bay Area to test this app and also have a conversation with their CEO about just the concept of what it means to create comic books for augmented reality. So check it out. So Madefire, you guys have been around for a while. You guys put comics in a digital format. Give me a little bit of history of uh, where you come from and uh, what Madefire does. Well, I know you know your comics. So um, yeah, we're passionate about um, storytelling. Um, we're a creator platform. We wanted to enable anyone to tell a story and make a character in a, in a world. And um, my interest has actually always been in, if you like, storyboarding and the way that the way that story is developed before it becomes, you know, film, TV, gaming. And I've always adored comics and the way that they are an e a, a relatively easy way to tell a story, you know, and, and build character. So um, as a group of founders, we wanted to make a place and a way for anyone to uh, publish uh, what we call a motion book, which is really a, a moving words and pictures story, a moving comic. And um, we have been, I think we're about six years into that journey. And this announcement with Magic Leap is very much a kind of the culmination of, of, of all that work, really. So when you guys started, was there like a list of things that you as comic creators and comics fans kind of listed out and quantified as these are the ex parts of the comic experience that we'd never want to change? Yeah. Because you're basically doing an adaptation at that point. Yeah. You know, one, one of the partners you have, Dave Gibbons, famously yeah. with Watchmen, and, yeah. and that graphic novel famously was very difficult to adapt, and yeah. its creators were very outspoken about the format as, as yeah. a pure form. Yeah, well, the rules we set ourselves were we need, a, we need to create tools that are very easy to use, because comics are, you know, pencil and paper. They should be simple. We, we shouldn't need to know any coding. We shouldn't mm. need to know 3D modeling and a lot of animation. So the way the tool, the, the Madefire tool, which is in a browser, is very easy to use. We also felt that reading is special because you get to control the pace and you're, mm. not, you're not at the mercy of someone else's speed. You can sit with the art. You can sit with the story. You can go backwards and forwards. So they were two, they were two important rules for us. And we didn't want to change the way people make <clears throat> stories already. So we didn't want to challenge anything to do with Adobe's tool set. Or, you know, that would be crazy because that's how people work. So we are, once people have drawn and written the book, we're the place that they can build the book and publish the book. So transitions, effects, scale, sound. So we think of that as building or animating a book. And while comics, as you guys have been publishing them, don't have to exist on a page, and maybe don't yeah. even think of them in terms of 22 pages, they're still panels. Yeah. Like panels, you talk about That's storyboards, right. those are panels, yes. and whatever format you're publishing on, iPad, VR, yeah. XR, they're still windows that panels the, yeah. into the content. Yeah, the um, moment. Um, comics are exciting because they leave, as we, as we said, a lot, lot of room for the imagination. We don't want to 
you know, if you start animating everything and telling every aspect of the story, you need to be Pixar or Disney. You know, you, mm. you're into big budgets, big productions. We wanted to give moments, um, let the imagination imagine some of the action and sound between, but punctuate those so they're more brought to life than just the PDF. Because I think that the problem we, we felt with digital is, and a lot of people felt like, oh, digital's not as good as my print printed book because you don't you can't smell it you can't the hold value it you of can't, the tangible yeah. is, is so strong so we really wanted to bring some qualities that are that are distinct to digital devices now as we get to magic leap you can actually walk through the story you can actually experience it as part of your world and it's it's a kind of mind blowing how the grammar of storytelling evolves well let's talk about this experience specifically yeah. when when people think about augmented reality, mixed reality, one of the first things they imagine is something literally popping out of a page, right? some yeah. connection to the real world, but that's not exactly what you're doing here. There is no you know, tracked object, characters yeah. aren't popping out of a page. Yeah. It is still reading panels, but now in your physical space. Yes, we've, we've thought about describing it as um, walking through a pop-up book. Mm. It's almost like you, know, you can kind of um, see it suspended in space, you can put it wherever you want in your room, you can walk through it as you've seen, you can um, bring it nearer to you or further away, you can scale it the size of a building or you can have it tiny in your hand. It's kind of amazing to think about um, layers in space with sound and motion and how, how much you can do with that. When you talk about interactivity, you're talking about people physically moving to the content, Is, yeah. was that a direct intent, is that something you imagine people will, will be doing as they're reading this, or yeah. is it more of a lean back? Uh, we actually wall? think it's, we think it's a lot of fun to be in certain scenes, to go and see like a bat cave for Batman and actually be able to explore it. But I think mm -hmm. generally, generally we wanted this to be a very, um, a, an experience that comes to you. So in the control with the glasses on, you can pull the book nearer or further, and mm -hmm. you can trigger through. So the interaction is quite straightforward. We feel like um, we want the storyteller to tell the story to the audience and not, not try and make loads of d different choices. Mm -hmm. um, we think that's part of the magic of storyboards and comics is that you're handheld through a story. So, there's, so to, to answer that, there's plenty of room to um, create Easter eggs and spaces for people to explore if that serves the story. But generally we feel like it's quite nice to just sit with it and, and feel like you're not in a rush and you're not having to fight anything and you can just hang out with this storytelling. You're adapting existing comic books, working with publishers to bring those into the Made Fire format, but you're also doing original content with yeah. this in mind, I imagine. Yes. How do those workflows yeah. differ? I mean, are the, does the script look the same? Are there specific kind of annotated instructions for how to format it in this, in this format? Yeah, we, we've created loads of how-tos and jump-in guides and videos that all sit on Madefire. And we found that at this point in 2019, um, ha probably half of the publishers are creating material in layers mm. and, and half are still pretty oriented. I'm talking about print publishers for PDF. But what we've seen is gaming companies like Blizzard, um, studios like Fox, Nickelodeon, Disney, they're all, they're all in layers already. So they're actually creating art and text in layers. So they, they found this tool very native, very very logical. In fact, more logical than collapsing everything into a PDF. So we want to keep things um, with depth and immersive. The way writing, uh, the feedback we get from writers is, ah, oh, this is a real freedom. Because instead of having to you know, start top left on a page and finish bottom right, Mm -hmm. Really, just got the axis of time, and you can reset the scene. All the so take a horror for example. We can punctuate any moment of a horror because you're kind of resetting the stage, rather than a, in a printed sense. You have to rely the on page the turn. Of a page. Yeah, yeah, so every panel is a page turn exactly. opportunity. It can be exactly, or you could build up a scene of different panels. So the grammar of storytelling and the way you build a scene. So the way we're writing is sequence instead of page. Mm -hmm. Kind of thinking of things in sections, sequences, and moments rather than pages and panels. Is there an opportunity to lay out sequences yeah. and panels all around you so it's a real 360 Yeah, experience? we love the idea. We, we've, it, so we make a whole series of originals with people like Dave Gibbons and Mike Carey and Bill Sienkiewicz, who are comic mm -hmm. book um, 
legends, but also newcomers are using the tools and we see things every day that we didn't think of. But our thesis has been keep it reading, keep people, so we don't voice the books, we let people read. Uh, we don't, and um, we wanted people to go at their own, very much their own pace. Um, so, so I think most writers have said that there's more freedom because there's more ways to punctuate the story and bring it to life. You don't do VO, but you do sound effects. Yes. And sound effects is something, yeah. with this device, you have some yeah. special sound, so it becomes another, is it a cue? Or how yeah. do you treat that? Well, generally for us, we've kept sound as two types of sound. There's a sort of music and atmosphere, which is mm. more about setting tone. And the way that works in the authoring tool, we can talk about how you make these things, is you can just set that as an um, omnidirectional. So pre the music or the sound, the atmosphere can be um, just present. It's not spatially specific. And then sound effects, something like a boom or, or you know, maybe, maybe there's a, a candle flickering or something and you want to add a sound to it. They can be just placed anywhere in space. Mm. So when we're placing a layer of art in space on the tour, we can also place a, a sound there as well. Now, for, for an art, artist, like you're an artist, when yeah. you're drawing something, designing a comic book for all these formats, do you think of it differently? Because you know, for CMYK on a page, yeah. it's being printed versus being backlit on a yeah. tablet versus in these motion comics, I've seen like negative space being used. How, yeah. how do you think about that? There's a lot to think about. I think comics are amazing already because the artists and writers are um, telling a story, they're casting, they're lighting, they're acting, they're the editor, you know, mm -hmm. as you know, they're kind of fully realizing a story. So most of the skills that, that you need are skills you need anyway for comics, you know, to think about where's the camera, where, where are you looking from, and is this a wide shot or is this a close up? It's really just a, a bigger canvas to, to bring those things to life. So a close up can be bigger and bolder and brighter. We actually found even with the move to iPad that Coloring can be a lot more iridescent and lurid than, than a printed page, much though I love it. And so this just accentuates that, um, the idea of scale and the idea of light, because we're telling st Magic Leap is a light field. So you're adding color and light into your existing reality, which is, is, is incredibly crisp and, and an amazing, um, it's an amazing experience. In some and cases, looking right through it. Yeah, you can look. Yeah, you can look through a portal into things with depth, or mm -hmm. you can look at the. Yeah, yeah. A, it kind of has to be experienced. You guys aren't using any tracking right now, mapping, meshing of the world. Is that something that you believe can have an effect on the comics reading experience? Yeah, we um, certainly uh, we've we've played around with. You can put these books and sequences anywhere. You can place them above you, big, small, against the wall tied to the floor so you can place them where you mm -hmm. want them and there's certainly a lot of fun to be had as we integrate more with meshing down the line but, but we really felt like this story sh should be able to be um, uh, um, directed by the author to kind of play out in a, in a volumetric space in the middle of a room not necessarily having to be tied to the floor or the wall mm -hmm. there's a lot of fun to be had with those things but we really, we wanted the authoring to be simple. We wanted the, there's so much you can do with scale, size, depth, motion, that, that we didn't feel like the mesh of the room was totally critical. In fact, at the moment, you can put something big and as far away as you want, so you're not even constrained to your room. You can have something huge and out on the horizon. It's kind of fun. The vast majority of people out there with smartphones, the way they experience yeah. AR, a version of AR, is holding their phone up. You know, things yeah. like AR kit. Do you yeah. see this as a format that could extend to people experiencing that way or? Yeah, we, we've gone, we're the comics partner to Oculus in VR. We're now announcing as the partner to Magic Leap, which has some uh, things that are very um, special, like spatial, spatial sound. And obviously a mixed reality experience, very different to the VR experience. We do expect to roll out into other AR experiences. It's obviously a fast moving space. At the end of the day for us, it's like, how do you author something in layers with, with motion, depth, and sound and make it a really great story? And, um, and that, that can work from a phone all the way through to Magic Leap being the ultimate expression. We're having the most fun with Magic Leap. Like, it's just kind of mind-bending. It's great. Well, congrats on launch, Ben. Thank you so much for chatting with me. Cheers, Norman. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure.
Okay, Jeremy, so I think it bears explaining a little bit more what this experience is. Um, as we hopefully are able to show you uh, with some of this capture, you know, these are floating panels, but it's based off of the technology that Madefire had already developed for reading comics on existing flat screen platforms. And it in fact uses the same tool that they've used to develop all of their uh, motion books, which is a motion book tool that you can actually use for free if you go to their website and it's web-based, so it's really accessible. You can put your assets in there and drag them around and create one of these scenes. I mean, it's, a, it's an animation process, essentially. Oh man, when I was developing menus for the PlayStation years ago, we would have killed for an app like this because we were doing this. We were taking layered Photoshop files from game developers and breaking them out into menus and animating them in and you leave the menu and they'd animate out just what they're doing, but their tool is so friendly. Yeah, and, and it's a a powerful tool because they want comic creators themselves to be using this tool and animating the comics. Now, we'll take a step back. This whole idea of reading comics not on the, the printed page really took off you know, when the iPad came out. And a lot of people now read comics on digital platforms. People have, I think, been doing it for a long time on their computer screens, mm -hmm. scans of comics. Uh, when the iPad came out, it made logical sense. You can flip the page, and there was a very skeuomorphic aspect to it, right? You can Interesting. actually have the panel, a panel, flip a page, and it would load a new page. And then I think comic creators, publishers, and app developers realized that they want to create experience that would, I wouldn't say elevate the platform, but make it differentiate than the physical need to buy a $5 comic book. Well, you can't touch a digital comic book. There's something missing from that, right? Yeah. So like, you're, you're not turning a page. You can't smell it. And mm -hmm. so they have to add something to compensate for that, I feel, in order to make it, you know, interesting. And in many cases, the tablet that you have, or even the phone that you have, you can't get the fidelity, right? Despite right. The, you know, the, the pixel resolution well, certainly, of your phones. Certainly the back size. in the day, like the original iPad where this all started, absolutely. Now right. I would think the iPad Pro actually is starting to look quite a more, a bit like paper. And a lot of people do read comics on their phones. And for those people, it made sense for app developers like Comixology to develop technologies and Madefire to develop technologies to then transition and so you focus more on the panel and less the whole page at once. Right, that is compensating for the low resolution? Or just the screen size. Right. Right, if your canvas is gonna be a five inch or four inch phone at the time, yeah. then it makes way more sense for as a comic book reader to read one panel at a time than read one page at a time. Mm -hmm. And so there were animation tools built in to automate maybe some of the, the dialogue boxes popping up and to have you go from panel to panel to panel. But like you said, that is a very different just experience than the comic book, the 22 page comic book where the writer and the artist have designed a reading experience where turning the page is kind of, kind of crucial, I think, to the pacing of the comic. Mm -hmm. right? You enjoy the dialogue, the panels on the page, the page turn is when a new event or it's an opportunity for a cliffhanger or a reveal, a big action scene. And that's kind of like the, the grammar of the format. Well, the digital format, I guess, has had these seven years to evolve and they've figured out what you're talking about, at least as much as they're going to, I would think. And now they've evolved to the point where they're ready to project it into augmented reality and place right. these things in three dimensions. Uh, in front of you. I guess it's a lot like having it in virtual reality, but instead, now with the Magic Leap, it is actually floating in front of you in your environment. Uh, and so, I mean, it, that gets you some interesting things. That gets you a real sense of depth. It's not just layers moving in front of each other. You can actually feel the sense of there's something that exists in space between, you know, in front of one another. And if you have planes that are doing this, it's one thing, but you can also put planes at an angle, mm -hmm. and that is much more effective in 3D than it is in two dimensions. Well, you're getting parallax. R well, yes, absolutely. Real parallax. And you can produce your own parallax by moving around. And that's where they can hide some information. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone, if you're, they're drawing this kind of harkens back to the old animation days when Walt Disney was doing Snow White, you know, you would have a background plate, a foreground plate, right. and, and you would actually photograph those together. Yeah. Here, you, can, you essentially have different layers of your art, and you can have a lot of detail. If you, you can let the viewer, with Magic Leap, walk up close and look around a character. And in fact, break the experience. I mean, there's no way around that. Yeah. You can now look past where the texture, whatever that geometry is, where yeah. it ends. You can see textures that are hidden behind textures that are supposed to be masked off. But it's all, it's kind of interesting because it's more like a thing that exists in the real world in that case. So I'm, I'm curious though, I mean, I don't know if I could call it a comic book. Like the right. line between comic book 
to animation, if yeah. we call those, and, and, and film animation and two ends of the spectrum, this kind of sits somewhere in the middle. It's like an animated storyboard. But once you bring that out to the size of a TV screen, it even loses what you get when you read on a tablet, which is still kind of holding something in your hand, right. like you would a graphic novel. This then is almost like a film projected a light box or a, a shadow box right. of animated images. I, I almost feel like this clearly is moving towards making a movie. Like mm. they're taking comic books which are inherently static still imagery and they're animating them. They're, they're taking the layers and they're moving them in and out, creating these you know, intros and outros from the scenes and these transitions, which are basically like the first steps towards turning these into real cartoon animated experiences. Yeah. Is that what comic book readers want? That's, and that's the fundamental question, right? They've, it really looks like they've taken uh, an approach where they've taken the existing technology they've made, this existing tool set and platform and library, because they have thousands and thousands of comics on the Madefire platform that have the motion comic features, mm -hmm. and they've adapted it to work with AR in an implementation that is very different than the experience of reading a comic book. And yes, it shares the, the sense that you know, they are using panels and they are using text boxes and there's no voiceover. Right. It, but at some point, it just feels more like a, a toned down movie than it does exactly. an augmented comic book. That's exactly it. Like, and why isn't there voiceover? Would there be voiceover if there was just more budget and time? And, right. Or would there be more animation if there was just more budget and time? I mean, what is the, what is the goal? And if it is to add all those elements, then it takes away something of the, you know, the imaginary, the imaginary uh, uh, role that you play in reading a comic book, where mm -hmm. you invent what they sound like and their yeah. intonations and the movement. Yeah, and if a lot of this is adapting existing comic books, if they're multi-publishing not only the physical comic book still, but also the iPad version, and then also the AR version. VR version. Some, the VR version, something's got to give. Like if you fully commit to the VR experience and you script the comic and you have the artist design and, and, and animate it for AR, XR mm -hmm. only, right. that might be a very different experience than if you're taking a 22 page comic and maybe an old graphic novel and then porting it over. Yeah. And they have to meet, the, I understand why they have to meet the middle ground for, yeah. just for library purposes, but it doesn't feel like it's wholeheartedly in this new platform. Interestingly, they said that you could produce one of these motion books to uh, exist around the user, around mm -hmm. the player. Yeah. And we didn't see anything like that. And I think that's because they are sort of beholden to their the platform that they started on, which right. is the two-dimensional screen. And I do think it would be more interesting if these things evolved around you, sort of like in Dear Angelica, or one of the experiences that mm -hmm. Oculus made, where you really have to stand up and look around, even with Henry. You know, you're looking around in all directions, and there's something that exists all around you. That's something you can't do with a comic book. You know, whenever we review VR games and try new VR experiences, we ask ourselves, does this new need VR? Right. Uh, and is VR only bringing presence? Is it just another way of you know, of, of controlling the camera, or does VR actually bring something new to it? I think we can ask the same thing of this type of experience, does it need AR? Because when we were told, let's go check out comic books in, in augmented reality, mm -hmm. my first thought was it was gonna be opening an actual comic book, hmm. having tracked pages, and then getting animation effects in the physical panels mm -hmm. of a 22 page book. That wasn't this at all. I could imagine if they already have this, the, the art assets animation, maybe a blank book. Right. Let me hold something physical and then animate the panels on there. That could be cool. That sounds difficult. Then you're talking about tracking yes. the actual fold of the pages. I do agree with you. If you had, that would be interesting. <laughs> yeah. An interesting like book peripheral that's just blank and you can project whatever you want onto it. Uh, that would be neat, yeah. but also very, very difficult. Yeah. Uh, I, I think at this point, we're still in the experimentation phase. Right? Like, I think developers are taking the language and the grammar of the tool sets that they know mm -hmm. and formats that they know, in this case, media and comic books and, and literally throwing it on the wall. I really, and I have mixed feelings about this because I, I the, the guys who are running this company, I think they're the real deal. They're not looking to, make, to cash in on new technologies. Yeah. They are comic book guys, yes. like to the bone. Yeah. And I, they believe that the comics will evolve into something that's more electronic and, and I, they're probably right. I'm just not convinced that we've found it yet, and I'm not sure what that is. And it, and it concerns me that it is going to move more towards movies. Do people want to be that passive when they digest their comics? I'm not so sure. No, I, I think when I when I read a comic book, the things that I like 
is the physical nature. Yeah. The things I like are the page turning. Um, you know, it's 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 a two way communication because I'm adding a lot of my imagination to it as well. Right. And so I don't necessarily need a comic book to be fully animated. I can go to the movies for that, right? So I, I don't know where that middle ground is, and I'm not exactly sure this is it, but I'm glad they're trying and experimenting with it. And as a piece of technology, it is interesting to see art floating in space, to mm -hmm. see negative space be used in an interesting way with the black and the, the colors and the white, right? as opposed to having solid outlines you're looking through. Mm -hmm. You know, It's not exactly interactive with the room you're in, but you are interacting with it in your room. We should point that out, that as, an, as a Magic Leap app, it actually is the first one I've seen that doesn't take advantage of the room mapping. So yeah. there, there's no sense of where the walls are uh, if you Obviously, it doesn't project the images onto the wall. I would have liked, at the very least, it, when you're pushing the image away from yourself, if it stopped at the wall, like if that was a hard limit. Mm. Instead, they do let you push through it. I'm sure that they could make it work that way, and maybe that's the end goal. But I was surprised that we saw a Magic Leap app that didn't take advantage of their killer feature, which right. is this ability to know where all of your geometry is in the real world. Right. And maybe, maybe a way to use this, maybe a way to take advantage of it, is the idea of putting art on your walls. Right. You know, so many times I look at beautiful art in comic books and I want to buy a print of it or I want to you know, take the page out and put it on my wall, frame it up because I love the art. If you have a digital version of that, you know, it would be very easy for you to have at least an augmented reality persistent piece of art in your real space. That would be pretty neat. Like that's, that's a way I, I could see digital comics being interfaced with the real world. Yeah. It's a free app if you have a Magic Leap. I do recommend checking it out in the same way that I would recommend checking this out on, the, on an iPad or in VR, just so you can see what people are thinking about the future of dead tree media and how that might exist and transition into an electronic world. All of the catalog that's up there is free, including the, the, the app itself, so there's no cost of entry. Uh, it's, I'm glad that they're doing it. And I'll also be curious to see what other people do with their tool, yeah. especially when it comes to enveloping the user in a 360 experience. Yeah. Media in AR and even in VR for the, uh, still hasn't been solved yet. A lot of problem solving still to come. Anyway, that's it for this week. We'll be back next week with more coverage in VR and AR. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.